I got to start with Trump because it's remarkable to me. Uh, Bob Woodward, obviously of Watergate fame, uh, is teasing his new book that I believe is out next week. Uh, so he's teasing his new book, and uh, it's called Fear, uh, Trump, White House. And essentially, it's apparently deeper and, and better reported than Michael Wolff's book about Trump, which was essentially a giant mean girls aimed at Trump. Uh, Michael Wolff uh, had people, mostly anonymous sources, as all these books are, calling him stupid and a moron and things we all know. Things we all know. Uh, but Woodward's book uh, goes a little further. It quotes General Mattis as calling him a, a, an idiot with a fifth or sixth grade intelligence level. Uh, Jeff Sessions in the book, uh, Woodward quotes Trump as calling Jeff Sessions retarded, which is obviously not a, a word that anyone should use, uh, and basically mocking him that he's Southern. Um, in the book, uh, it says that uh, aides of Trump, like literally steal documents off his desk uh, to try and stop him from signing things or making rash decisions. Um, and basically, you know, it says that Trump told Mattis, let's assassinate Assad. Let's just go in and assassinate him. And Mattis said, sure, we'll do that. And then after was like, we're not going to do any of that. Just a lot of stuff like that. Uh, and today, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but today um, there was a New York Times op-ed, a New York Times op-ed. This is kind of unprecedented, actually. Uh, it's a New York Times op-ed from an anonymous source, from an anonymous senior administration source. So basically what you have is the New York Times giving a senior administration official anonymity to basically bash the president. Um, and I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but we'll look at just a little bit. The Times today is taking the rare step of publishing an anonymous op-ed essay. We have done so at the request of the author, a senior official in the Trump administration, yada, yada, yada. And I'm gonna skip over the parts I think aren't relevant. Uh, to be clear, ours is not the popular resistance of the left. We want the administration to succeed and think that many of its policies have already made America safer and more prosperous. But we believe our first duty is to the country and the president continues to act in a manner that is detrimental to the health of our republic. So I'm gonna start right there. Isn't it rich? Isn't it rich that you have all these officials who they knew who Donald Trump was before the campaign? They knew who Donald Trump was during the campaign. They knew who Donald Trump was day of. Oh, no, inauguration. This is not new information they're getting on President Trump. They wanted to help him deregulate the whole economy and stomp on you workers and progressives more. They wanted you, uh, they wanted to give giant tax cuts to the billionaires, the corporations, and themselves. And they knew who Donald Trump was. And now, apparently, it's like you could know something, but until you see it, that apparently stirs some level of craze. So you have, I'm not going to read the rest of this op-ed, but basically the op-ed says he's immoral. He makes impulsive and catastrophic decisions. He's a danger to the country. And the administration officials, instead of resign, the administration officials, many of which feel this way and include uh, they're not putting it in there, but you would assume Mattis, you would assume Jeff Sessions, you would assume uh, Cohn, who left, uh, you would assume uh, Steve Mnuchin, I'm assuming uh, Pence. You would assume they all feel this way. So my question is very simple. And again, I'm not defending Trump. I think he is a danger. I really do. And he's obviously taking a, a machete uh, to the middle class, uh, to minorities, uh, to the environment. Uh, this is no defense of President Donald Trump. But instead of creating this media circus and giving anonymous sources, uh, anonymous quotes to Bob Woodward, uh, instead of writing anonymous op-heads for the New York Times, which honestly, journalistically speaking, is totally absurd. It is totally absurd for the New York Times 
you can you can hate Trump all you want, but if somebody feels so strongly, if I'm a journalist and somebody feels so strongly that the president is not fit to leave, that the president is mentally unstable, that's what the document, that's what the piece says, then they need to put their name to it, because I don't know what this he or she's motivations are. It you know it's a slippery slope when you're starting to give anonymous senior administration officials, which by the way, anonymous senior administration officials are the same ones that were feeding the New York Times bullshit about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Anonymous officials have been the same ones feeding the New York Times and the Washington Post. There's no surveillance of U.S. citizens. Anonymous officials are the same ones that have been feeding the New York Times, the Washington Post, MSNBC, uh, CNN and all of these. There's no deep state. There's no deep state. So you can have two things at once. But my question is very simple. And again, this isn't me saying I want this, which I'm going to get to in a minute. This is me saying, what is it if, if, if let's just for argument six, there's been enough books, there's been enough sources that have said Mattis thinks he's an idiot. Sessions thinks he's an idiot. Mnuchin thinks he's an idiot. Pence thinks he's an idiot. All of them think he's unstable. Well, there's something called the 25th Amendment. Okay? The 25th Amendment, if a uh, president is medically unable to perform his duties, it was spoken about uh, with Ronald Reagan when people started seeing signs of dementia. Uh, If the president is physically unable, mentally unable, you can exercise the 25th Amendment, which uh, I'll read it very quick. This is a decent explanation. Here we go. The answer lies in Section 4 of the 25th Amendment to the Constitution. The amendment states that if for whatever reason the vice president and a majority of sitting cabinet secretaries decide that the president is, quote, unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office, they can simply put that down in writing and send it to two people, the Speaker of the House and the Senate's President Pro Tem. Then the vice president would immediately become acting president and take over all the president's powers. Let that sink in. One vice president and any eight cabinet officers can theoretically decide to knock the president out of power at any time. If the president wants to dispute this move, he can, but then it would be up to Congress to settle the matter with a vote. A two-thirds majority in both houses would be necessary to keep the vice president in charge. If that threshold isn't reached, the president would regain his powers. So, and again, I don't want to harp on this all day because there's more important stories. Uh, So I'm going to try to make this as quickly as I can. So then it comes down to a a question of actual political courage, which Republicans don't have and the majority of Democrats don't have. My next uh, topic is about one who does have, Bernard Sanders, who... Thank God, finally someone has taken it to the corporate welfare state and Jeff Bezos and the Waltons in particular. And share this video. Let's get it out to more people. Reminder, this is a super chat if you want to contribute. We're going to launch our GoFundMe uh, next week. So you have, presumably, if all this is true, which I think it is, no doubt about it, Matt has called him a moron with a fifth grade style. Sessions has called him an idiot. Many people in his administration have called him unfit, mentally unstable, on and on and on. If they feel this way, why don't they just invoke the 25th Amendment? Why is that? Why do you think they won't invoke the 25th Amendment? You would think if they're leading the resistance, not the fake progressive resistance that the Hillary Clinton crowd is leading, but the the Trump resistance from within, why is it? If they feel this way, why are they writing anonymous op-heads? Why are they giving anonymous quotes to Bob Woodward? If the president is such a danger, and I think he possibly is a danger, why don't they invoke the 25th Amendment? Could it be that Trump would protest it? Could it be that it would go 
to then a Congress scared of their own shadow when it comes to Trump, scared of facing the new Republican base, which is the Trump voter, scared that if a Congress would vote to remove two thirds of the Congress, would vote to remove a President Trump, that they would lose reelection, that they would have no political future? Could it be that these officials feel it is time to invoke the 25th Amendment, but we don't want to hurt the Republican Party. We don't want to have them to have to face those votes because they are either going to go against the cabinet, who they're all in one big circle jerk together, Mike Pence, Paul Ryan, or BFF, McConnell, same thing. Don't give me this bullshit. And again, I actually, which I'm about to get to, I would be very cautious. Speak with the people in Indiana about let's get rid of him and bring in Mike Pence. If you remember my reporting uh, when I was at the Young Turks in Indiana, from East Chicago to female reproductive rights to religious zealotry, Mike Pence is a more competent less awful sounding and tweeting religious zealot. He is a Christian fundamentalist. 